Okay. Okay, cool. So we've got till 12 o'clock, is that right? Yep, seven o'clock my time, yeah. Excellent. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today. So thanks to Dino and Michael for organizing the symposium as well. It's great to be able to get together because all of the other face-to-face -face meetings and conferences are cancelled at the moment, which is unfortunate. So this is a really nice um, opportunity to speak to you. Um, you're obviously going to go and grab a drink at the moment. So uh, you might be drinking coffee or wine, depending where you are in the world. I'm not going to judge if you're having wine in the UK just now. That's fine. It's been a, a, a tough week. So I'm going to start with this quote. Now this was a quote from Dr. Julian Braybrook, the government chemist, uh, one of our industrial partners, LGC. And this was before the full impact of COVID-19 was felt throughout the world. So now this has completely changed the way that we interact, the way we deliver content online, and you know it presents new challenges, but these challenges were there before as well. And there are solutions that can help, which I'm gonna discuss today. And interestingly, over those two decades, learning science have been developing solutions, educational technology solutions to support online learning. But the actions that we take now to support our students through this time, we want them to have a legacy of long lasting benefits when things return to normal, when teaching starts again, when the lecture theatres are full, hopefully, and the teaching labs reopen. If you're interested to read the rest of this article, it's on our website and it's called Mind the Gap, Future Proofing Today's and Tomorrow's Graduates for the Rapidly Changing STEM Landscape. So a bit about our company, for those of you who don't know us, we are uh, an educational technology partner. We've been providing educational solutions for over 14 years now to higher education. We have an expert team of scientists, web developers, educational specialists, based in Bristol in the UK. We have over 60 university partnerships around the world and we work with them in close collaboration to develop our resources and online assessments. And we get lots of feedback from all of these universities, all of the academics we work with, which feed back into enhance our products. Um, we develop new resources uh, and things to help you, to help your students. So our resources are used widely across the world, across the STEM subjects and over 300,000 learning activities were taken on our platform last year. Okay, so I have 20, 30 minutes now, and I just want to talk through some of these um, items on this agenda. So just introduce the technologies to start with. Lots of you are using it already. Some of you have seen it before. Some of you won't have um, come across it yet. I'm gonna talk about preparing students for lab work. So at the moment, they can't get to the lab, but one day they'll be back in the lab. So what can we do at the moment to keep them in touch with those skills, give them some practice. So that might be the simulations that you've seen already in Stephen's talk, or it might be some online worksheets and getting them practicing data analysis and appreciating collecting good data and what they do with that data after the lab. So that leads on to the next section, which I wanna spend most of the time talking about, and it's our smart worksheet technology which enables students to practice online, working through complex data analysis with lots of feedback, lots of support. One of the benefits of the system is although they get lots of practice exercises, it doesn't create a huge amount of uh, marking for you. It's auto-graded, they still get the personalized feedback uh, and it really Im improves their understandings on some of these topics. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. Finally, teaching labs with no teaching labs. So this uh, has risen to the top of a lot of your agendas and you're talking about this at the moment. Um, what, what are we doing at the moment about this? Uh, what are the possibilities? What are the things that you might be considering? And I wanna share our insights onto that and what we're doing currently with our university partners who are running labs online at the moment. Um, yeah, we can have questions throughout. So I'd like uh, this to be interactive and I can stop and look in more detail at any of the activities that we go through. 
I've got a lot of slides, a lot of examples. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you want to see anything in more detail, a lot of the examples I've set up on a showcase site. So any of the delegates at this conference, I can give you a, a login details for that. You can go and look at them in your own time as well. Okay, to get started, um, Stephen's already introduced our, our pre-labs, but let me just tell you a little bit more about them. These are libraries of resources that are just ready to use. These consist of HTML5 simulations, like the ones playing in this video here, where students can practice some of the, the techniques and work through some procedures that they would do in the lab. Lots of feedback in here, chances to make mistakes, see the consequences of those in a safe environment, build confidence, build some understanding. And of course, they're gonna enter a lab, a high cognitive load environment, and we just want to introduce them to some of the key things they'll be doing there, reduce their anxiety down, and you know, hopefully they'll enjoy the labs a little bit more, be a little bit less stressed about working in that environment. So, you know, also working safely as well, it's really important. And some of the theory around what they'll be doing there. So the, the, the GIF here playing the IR instrumentation, what's going on in that machine, trying to teach them a little bit more about what's happening there. So there's hundreds of resources in these libraries. We also have smart worksheets. And these are online worksheets that students can work through calculations. There's feedback every step of the way. There's hints as they type. So they're fully supported through these really complex activities. And they get to do lots of practice, randomized data. They can start analyzing spectra. Here's one on analyzing an IR spectra. There are lots of examples for them to practice doing this. And again, lots of feedback depending on what they select for their answers. So this is targeted feedback specific on uh, what that student is struggling with. Another example on a, a titration experiment here with an interactive graph there that they can answer further questions on. I'm going to talk a lot more about smart worksheets. So I'll move on to just to give you an overview of what's in that library. Lots of topics here that are already covered. There's already resources here to support you there. You can just add onto your VLE or LMS as you might call it. If you visit our website at learningscience.co.uk, you can head to the resources section and see our product catalogues. We have a bioscience library and a chemistry library. And here you can get a little bit more information about each of those activities in the library. And if you get in touch with me, I can set you up access to a showcase site where you can play around with all of this stuff as well. All of the activities, assessments, smart worksheets that you'll see in these slides work within modern browsers and they integrate into your existing VLE, whether it's Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, Brightspace, Sakai, via LTI links. So it's really simple to set up. So how does it work? There's an annual license for the library to access all of the content. You get to use it to an unlimited extent in your department. We can develop quizzes that contain the library activities. This means you can track how the students are getting through those activities and award some marks for completing them. We also keep you up to date with usage stats and reports throughout the year. So if you do want more details on this or you want demo access, get in touch. My email address is there. The website address is at the bottom. You can get in touch via the website as well or via the chat, and we'll set you up access to try this. We also build custom, completely bespoke smart worksheets. Now, these might be based on your, your post lab. So in this example, you can see a, an existing pro forma from a titration post lab, which we converted into a smart worksheet. So this is all the feedback in there. The students enter their own lab data. The marks are set up exactly how you like them. And this is all auto-graded and integrated with your gradebook. So fully tailored to your lab or tutorial, embedded in your VLE, integrated into your gradebook. So if you're interested in one of these bespoke projects, get in touch again via the email. I'd like to tell you about something really exciting. We have a brand new smart worksheet library we've been working on for three or four years. We have a huge collection of smart worksheets 
ready-made, ready to go, lots of practice for your students working through these. These have randomized data so they can complete these in, with different attempts as many times as they like. It's got all the hints and all the feedback that all our worksheets have to help them through that and guide them through their learning. And I'm just going to jump out again to show you where we've got this. We've got a showcase site. And again, if you want access to look at these, I can set this up. So I can give you access to this page where you can look through any of these smart worksheets. So we're covering loads of things here. There's me uh, reaction mechanisms there as well, electrochemistry, kinetics, errors, spectroscopy, calculations, uh, some NMR spectroscopy, pH buffers. So there's a whole list of things there, significant figures, decimal places, lots and lots of practice worksheets for your students to try. Again, if you want to see more of that, get in touch and we'll set you up access. So moving on now to preparing students for lab work. And now I know at the moment the students can't get to the lab, so it's even more important that we do still expose them to some of the things that they'll come across in the lab and get them thinking about uh, the types of practicals that we're running and the types of skills that they will need to develop for those. So here's typically students will get to the lab and they haven't actually looked at what they're going to be doing. They haven't engaged with the lab manual and they have lots of questions right at the start. They're very slow to get started. They don't always have the right terminology to describe and name the equipment they're going to be using. And they often have to wait around for demonstrators to help them get set up. And this has a knock on effect to them rushing through the lab, trying to collect some data. Um, not always getting the best data and then that affecting their sort of analysis and post lab assignments at the end. So what we're trying to do with our dynamic pre labs is giving them some practice beforehand, getting them up to speed on what they're going to be doing, trying to reduce that cognitive load a little bit. There's a lot going on when they get to that lab environment and this is really effective. And if you haven't already got the link to this paper or read it, um, Richard, Dylan and Barbara at Leicester have written up the implementation of the learning science pre-labs into their undergraduate uh, lab courses. You can read more about that in that paper. And we have an article on our website about that as well. So they've been using these resources for three years now in their, in their lab program, and it's been really successful there. I did want to pick out just three other quotes uh, from this paper. Uh, the first one here, it was noted that from the data, students were accessing the resources three, four or five times um, to prepare for the lab and afterwards to revise techniques. And those that identified with learning difficulties had um, accessed them even more as well. So it's really helping uh, that cohort in, in getting up to speed and ready for the labs. A comment from a student here. So the students were just quicker at getting up to speed in the lab and, and getting working straight away. And this has a knock on effect to, to have their enjoyment of the lab and being able to relax and interact with the demonstrators and staff in there as well. Um, and here that demonstrator comment noting that, you know, that interaction between the staff and students was much better. They weren't just asking questions about setting up. They were asking questions about what was actually going on um, and what was what science was going on behind the, the practical there. Um, here's another study we did at the University of Glasgow, and this was led by uh, Dr. Kirsty Watts there, where we've rolled out some pre-labs and post-labs for their organic chemistry labs. And this builded on a lot of the great work already done there with videos, pre-lab quizzes, really preparing those students for that, for that lab work and getting the most out of the lab time. So we looked at, could we improve this further with simulations? So on the left here, we can see the, the this a cohort that had access to the videos and the quizzes, but not the simulations. And some of them found that they had good opportunities to practice, but not all of them. Only half of them really felt prepared for the lab. And again, a lot of them didn't feel that it improved their in-lab experience. When we added the simulations into that pre-lab, so giving them lots of different options to prepare for the lab now, it really gave everyone opportunities to practice. They felt much more prepared for that lab. And, you know, they enjoyed that lab much more. And first they noted that sort of levels of anxiety really dropped uh, in those lab classes.
again, the technicians noticing those benefits. Uh, before I move on um, to start looking at this supporting students and data analysis, I just want to take this. This is actually from the University of Sydney, um, who we got up and running just last week with the simulations. Um, Stephen got hold of these about a month ago and worked really hard to get these embedded in Canvas. And it's just interesting to see uh, the student engagement during uh, this remote uh, learning period that there's still a very high level of engagement. They're still looking to learn and we can still offer them uh, this opportunity to practice these lab skills that are going to be so important when they get back into those labs. So this is in the space of one week. So these have been online for one week at, at Sydney and we've had over 15,000 learning activities taken already there. So you can get up and running with these very quickly if you need to. So I'm just going to pause just to see if there's any questions because I haven't been following the, the group chat. Because um, next we're going to move on to looking at supporting students in data analysis. So is there any, there's a lot of comments since I last looked at the chat. So is there any questions that? Okay, sorry, I'm trying to follow this this chat. Would pre okay, the smart worksheets. I'm just answering Stephen Potts' question here and about the smart worksheets that are pre-made. There are some worksheets in the chemistry and bioscience libraries themselves. The big list of smart worksheets that I, I showed you there was a separate library, um, and now it's a slightly different uh, model to to access those. Uh, you don't need to subscribe to the whole thing. You can pick and choose what you want from that. So please get in touch uh, to get access to that and to have a look through what you might be able to make use of. I'm going to answer one more and I'm going to move on because I've got a lot more to get through in 15 minutes. Um, and we can follow up with these questions afterwards as well. Uh, Magda is asking about can they be embedded in OneNote? So these are set up to seamlessly embed within the VLE. So they're LTI links. Um, so they work in a very similar way on each um, learning management system or virtual learning environment. Uh, so at the moment, they were not embedding these in OneNote. Um, I can follow up with you on that. Um, but at the moment, you'll be using your Blackboard, your Moodle, your Canvas, and, and adding the content there. Okay, I'm just going to move on now to talk about supporting students in data analysis. Um, this is a, an area we can really do something different online to what you might do in the lab. Um, and here we're not, it's not an inferior experience for students. Uh, we, can, we can support them through this uh, really complex um, sets of questions and exercises. Um, and we can provide, as I say, we can provide lots of practice without giving you lots of work to, uh, to mark these. And what we can do here is build the student's confidence uh, in, these, in these areas and to break down barriers between the students and staff. So the students can practice this in their own time, especially the ones that are a bit more shy in, in sort of raising their hand and asking questions and saying they don't understand something. They can go away, work through these activities, look at the feedback and then have the confidence to then raise a question. Uh, and not feel awkward or silly about, about asking that. So this is really helpful for them. As I say, we can cover some really difficult concepts. I'm going to demonstrate some examples of that. And, and, and the students, although online at the moment, and they might feel a bit isolated uh, from that university setting where they have everyone around them to help, it's really important that we, they feel supported and that we can continue to challenge them, though, in their learning, and not, not just telling them what they need to know, but really still pushing pushing them there with what they we're asking them to do. So let me just show you for those that haven't used these uh, worksheets, what they look like. So on the right here, we have a, a video playing of a titration smart worksheet. And the students can 
can type in data into these cells. So here they're typing in um, a volume. So this might be data that they've collected themselves in the lab or it might be model data provided and they get in real time hints as they type. So that value they're entering is being validated and we can sort of correct misconceptions here, make sure that they're not doing some typo before they enter that answer for, for, for grading. Uh, we can point out things like decimal places and significant figures. We can also provide targeted feedback uh, to what that student is inputting into that cell. So if they get that wrong, our system will recognize that they've not converted into here into molarity. If the student still struggles and this, this particular student decided to solve that cell and get the answer, they didn't get any marks for that, but they got to continue through the worksheet. So there's no frustration about getting stuck uh, as they're working on their own through these activities. Uh, the student comes to the second attempt at this uh, particular uh, calculation and they get it wrong again. And here, this example shows some different targeted feedback. Here, they haven't done a conversion from milliliters to liters. So they can read that feedback, change their answer, get it correct. And this, this student's now got four of the available six marks for that cell. The third attempt here, the student, just to, to show the learning here, has got this right first time and has gained all six marks for that cell. So that sort of covers the, the sort of basic um, entry of numbers and raw data into these uh, worksheets and how we can step them through multi-step calculations with feedback. We can have dynamic graphing in there as well so they can explore their data on these plots and interact with those graphs and answer questions on those. Um, I wanted to show an example for this. This is a, a second year physical chemistry lab. But it's quite a complex one. And this is uh, work we've done with Professor Alan McKinley at Western Australia. He'd seen the work we've been doing with Dino in the first year labs, and he'd been struggling, or his students had been struggling with some of the understanding around two of his, his, his labs and the post lab worked for that and, thought, and saw that our technology was the right technology to use in this instance to help them with that understanding. Uh, I'm gonna try and jump out and show you this on a live site. If this doesn't work, I'll talk you through some screenshots there. Let me just log back in. So as I say, we've done a pre and a post lab for this lab and, and another one for Alan on hydrolysis there. This is a, a quite involved, long uh, post lab assignment. I'm just let this load up and show you what this worksheet looks like. It might take a, a minute to load while I'm on this call. There we go. Let me full screen that so you can see what I'm looking at here. So here we've got um, the cells for the students entering their, their measurements. So they're taking lots of measurements there. And then they've got to plot the graph here, decide on the appropriate first and last points for these trend line pre and post uh, reaction. Um, and then R squared values here gets validated before they continue through this worksheet. But you can see this is a really involved um, exercise, quite complex, lots of calculations here on en enthalpy as well. We've jumped back to your slide deck. Oh, can I you see this? Went full screen. So oh, that's if you come point. out of full screen. Thanks, Bill. Can you see this now? Yes. Excellent. Okay. I was. I just won't full screen it. It's just to give you an eye about an idea about. You know, this is a very long, complex activity, and without the guidance, the students are really struggling to learn from it. I just want to show an attempt. So what I've done, we've set these some of these examples up on our showcase site. And again, I can give you access to have a look at these yourself in more detail. I can't show you live student attempts um, for data privacy, but I can show you an attempt that we've recorded on this, this sheet ourselves. So I can't fill screen this because you, you can't see it. So this, as long as you can see most of the screen, you can see the students here have entered their data that they've collected in the lab. 
And then down here, they've identified correctly the first and last points for these trend lines on this graph. This data has been validated. So we've assessed the quality of those R squared values. So we're not going to let the students continue here if they've set this up incorrectly or in a way that would just wouldn't be meaningful before they work through this activity, which might take them a couple of hours for validating the data that they're, they're collecting there. What we have available on our smart worksheets is a timeline function. So we can look back at how this particular student has worked through this activity. So we have a playback mode here. So we can start, you know, what did the student type in here? What, what did they get incorrect? What feedback did they see? What did they then enter based on the feedback that they saw um, in response to their input? And I want to skip forward here. We can sort of scrub forward through this timeline to when they were looking at, um, let me pause this for a second, when they were looking at setting up this graph. So interestingly, the first point they selected for their post reaction trend line was 12.5. So if we go down to the graph here, and the reaction hadn't quite finished here. So this hints, this validator has pointed this out to them. Are you sure this will include data taken before the reaction had finished? So upon reading that feedback, the student reassessed that, looked at the graph again, and then selected 14.5. Continued with the worksheet. This data was then checked and validated and they continued through the activity. So I'm not going to go through this whole uh, post lab, but it just demonstrates how these can really support students through these and how you as an instructor as well can look at how the students have worked through these and where they're struggling. And we're doing a lot of work on uh, data analytics and learning analytics at the moment and aggregating that together to see as a cohort, where are they struggling? What are they good at? What are they not so good at? Uh, do we need to provide more practice and exercises in certain areas? Let me pop back to the, the presentation. I've just realized looking at the time, I'm not going to get through many more of these examples. So what I'd like to do is give people access to the showcase site to look through some of these. And I'm going to just show a few more slides to demonstrate what else we can do. A really nice example here of using the spectra analysis tool we built with uh, London Metropolitan University. This is available in our smart worksheet library is this is a tutorial, which you probably all run a similar version of, where you would do an identification of an unknown compound. The problem is they all, sometimes only get to use one compound, and the students really wanted to practice more often. This is a really complex learning activity. Where we're pulling lots of different data together to identify these compounds. So the students would select from a drop-down list a compound. It would pull in the data into the worksheet, and they can then work through the various sections, uh, work, working through the empirical formula, the mass spectrum, double bond equivalence, identifying the functional groups in this interactive IR spectrum, um, and then doing an initial analysis of the proton and, and carbon NMRs. Here we're looking at the hybridizations, the splitting patterns, before presenting to the students a selection of compounds, the correct compounds, some distractors that match some, but not all of the data. We're then able to guide the student through questions in the worksheet to look at these compounds and see which match the data and which do not. And we can mark them on how many they identify there. Eventually ending up with one structure that matches it all, which they can then fully assign uh, in the worksheet and get feedback on that as well. So a really nice example of an exercise you could give to the students and it would be, they would support through the, through the activity uh, online. We also have our own reaction mechanism, um, question type in the worksheet. Now we previously used uh, sketching programs like Marvin Sketch to do mechanisms, but we found that the technology sometimes get in, gets in the way of the learning. Uh, and we didn't like the way that you could only provide feedback at the end once the students worked through the whole uh, mechanism. So with our mechanism question in the smart worksheet, we can give feedback at every stage, uh, at the start of the arrow, at the end of the arrow and target those misconceptions as the students work through it. Um, I've got lots of examples of this and there's lots of these in the Smart Worksheet library as well that you could assign to your students. We do still have structured drawing questions available as well in our assignments. And there's a few other examples which um, I'm going to skip over for now. 
And uh, lastly, just to show you here, this is a titration lab. We have pre and, and post lab examples for titrations and lots of other labs that I'll share with you. I wanna just uh, highlight this uh, stats panel here. We can break down during or at the end of the worksheet um, what the students are getting correct, what they're getting incorrect, uh, what types of questions they're getting right and what types of questions they're getting wrong. And we're, we're working closely with academics on fine tuning these, these stats and we can customize these for your worksheets as well, depending on, on what you want to look at. So this is a, a really exciting area of innovation that we're working on uh, at the moment. Um, I did pop a link into a case study from the University of Exeter where, where Nikki talks more about how this has really benefited some of their students and their, and their performance in the lab, as well as uh, in associated Sorry, questions. I'll, in I'll the probably exam. call a minute on time. <coughs> call a minute okay, on time. I'm just going to close to resuming. So if you want no to problem. place any links into the resources site, we can do that as well. No problem. Um, I did just want to mention that this can really reduce your, your marking load as well. This is all auto graded without compromising the feedback that you're giving to students. And go and talk to Andrew about this at his poster session later on, where we've been working with Queensland for, for many years now, implementing this in pre and, and post lab. And they've had some fantastic results there. And it's been scaled up from 100 students to 1,000 students across the whole first year and, and some of that second year now as well. Now, I never got onto the most interesting bit, teaching labs with no teaching labs, but come and talk to us about that. We've got lots of things we can help with there um, to get you up and running. Um, but the main point I wanted to make here was that we don't believe in replacing labs. The teaching labs will reopen and we want to support those and get those students into those labs, but we can provide lots of support in providing them with simulations and worksheets to build on their understanding of the analysis of data in there and giving them some practice uh, with some of the equipment and procedures and developing those skills as well um, along the way. And we're working closely with our partners now to modify some of our worksheets with randomized data so they can just use them remotely without students collecting data in the lab. And this is a really easy transformation to make. Okay, I'm going to finish there, but please do get in touch if you have any questions and I'd be happy to talk to you more about anything that I've showed in these slides. And sorry that I didn't have more chance to answer your questions during the presentation.